everybody, welcome back to my kitchen. So today I have my daughter-in-law Sarah with me. I have very pretty daughter-in-laws and this is another one of them. Anyway, I gave her a call and I said, hey, I'd like you to come over and be a part of my, my cooking channel today. And I asked her uh, what she would maybe like to cook. And she said she'd like to know more about mac and cheese because she lives by mac and cheese. Can you imagine that? I had also suggested that we would work with muffin tins and she thought that would be kind of a cool idea. So the two uh, recipes that we're working with today will uh, be done in muffin tins. So what would you like to see done with um, mac and cheese? I just want to know if there's any way that you can spice it up a little bit instead of just, you know, noodles and milk and cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the things for milk, uh, milk and cheese, yeah. <laughs> macaroni and cheese that makes macaroni and cheese absolutely delicious is sharp cheddar. White sharp cheddar is really an extra mm, to the whole thing. Mixing cheeses is also a very good thing. But I thought maybe we'd add some bacon. What do you think of that? I've never even thought of that. Well Sounds anyhow, great. we're going to add bacon. And so anyway, let's get started. One of my favorite ways of cutting bacon is whenever it is still frozen or slightly frozen so that I can cut it up into small pieces especially whenever I'm going to be putting it into things like I am today. four tablespoons of butter in here melting and I'm going to put in my cheese start to melt this and I'm going to add a half a cup of milk and add more cheese I'm also going to add a half a block of cream cheese I'm going to keep my heat medium to low and to keep an eye on this Okay, so it's melting down here and I'm adding actually another half a cup of milk to thin it out. Okay, so I pulled it off the burner and I've actually added another cup of milk to this. Now, there's something I wanna uh, talk about here and that is when you buy shredded cheese like this here, it is actually rolled in a flour quite often so it thickens it up a little bit more so I have a thicker deal going on here. If you grade your cheese, you're not going to be using as much milk. So that's why I'm showing you that you're going to have to have your milk beside you and you're going to be adding a half a cup at a time. So for a kick of flavor, I like to use onion and garlic powder. I don't use the salt because if you use the salt, you're going to wind up with a way um, saltier uh, mac and cheese till it's done and said. I'm going to put in an eighth of a teaspoon of each one. And when cooking, it's always best to add depth of flavor. Oh, it just makes stuff so wonderful. I like to use the peppercorns and grind it. This makes it so good and fresh. Okay, while well, June mixed up the cheese for the macaroni, she gave me the task of greasing the tins. And you have to grease your tins because we're not using any of the cup papers here. Um, so, it was my idea to use bacon grease to add the bacon flavor to the little mac and cheese cupcakes. So you're just going to get your basting brush, dip it in your bacon grease, and coat the entire circle of the cupcake tin. You want to do that top edge too, just in case any of the cheese sticks to the top of that. Alright, so I've cooked up a box of macaroni, I believe it's 15 ounces and I am pouring my cheese into the macaroni. All right, now that we've greased our cupcake tin, we are gonna take a little bit of flour and just dust lightly around. This helps set up the macaroni and cheese once it's being baked. Okay, now that the bacon's been put into the pan, we're gonna take the macaroni and cheese and just fill it to the top of each individual circle. Okay. 
Okay, so there we have our mac and cheese with the bacon on the bottom. We actually baked it at 375 for 25 minutes. These are going to be fantastic to eat. One of the things that I failed to mention, uh, in order to take the uh, macaroni and cheese out of the tins, we actually sat them in the freezer for about 10 minutes and then it just it sets them up nice and then you can take them out. You can take and warm them up again, but um, even at room temperature, they tasted delicious. Okay, so for presentation for food, it's always so important. I love to have on hand white trays of, of different kinds. So I would have oh, small ones, I have bigger ones, and things like this. You can find these things at TJ Maxx, Home Goods, uh, places like that. But anyway, it's always best to have your food uh, to where you have it piled up, more so than on a tray that's way too big for it. Now on this one here, you could add garnishings of um, oh, like the kale or really pretty lettuce leaves. You can do that. Or you can just simply um, yeah, go to your garden and get yourself some, some parsley and some, and I had a little red pepper. You can add that and it just makes it just it just makes it really uh, trims it up really nice so uh, those are just some extra tips and ideas for you all right so we're gonna try these now oh my word I was really leery of the onion powder and the garlic powder but it actually tastes really really good it gives it a whole different flavor Okay, so the next thing that we're going to make in the uh, muffin tin is a pancake popover. And this has got bacon in it also. So these, these two things that we're making today are absolutely wonderful ideas for a brunch. For the crust, I've got one cup of pancake mix. And I'm going to be mixing in one egg, a cup of milk, and one tablespoon of oil. So I've decided to bake and grease these also. Now we're gonna take our batter and place it into our cupcake tin. And this measurement is two tablespoons per circle. Okay, Sarah is going to put those in the oven. 375 for three minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've pulled them out and now we are going to put the top on these things. I'm going to be putting onion powder on this. Remember how I said onion powder just makes things taste so good? There again, if you use onion salt, it'll just be that much more salty. Sarah here, she is going to put grind some pepper on it. Okay, so put them back in the oven at 375, and we're gonna let them in there for around 25 minutes. And then we'll check them and see if the egg part is set up to our liking. If you like them to be gooey eggs, you let them in less time. If you want them harder, you let them in for longer. Okay, as these eggs bake, and you will come to a point to where they may bubble up like that. They look kind of cool, but you can actually take a fork in there and just um, pop them. Okay, so I have decided to tray these up on just the small tray that I have here and I'm going to run a line of maple syrup across here or pancake syrup. You can use real maple syrup if you want to. These taste absolutely delicious with just a little bit of that syrup across there. And I'm going to garnish it off with a little bit of my parsley here at the end. And ta-da! There you go! I hope that you've enjoyed this video with Sarah and I. We have enjoyed making it. Um, give us a, a thumbs up, subscribe, uh, hit that little bell so that you can be notified whenever a new video comes up, and I'll see you next time.